mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Well, depending on where and when you live, the fairest, most beautiful people could come in many shapes and sizes, with or without makeup. Beauty standards have... Well, certain body shapes have been quite literally held up on a pedestal, and some cultures celebrated the use of makeup. Others have looked down on it as a sign of promiscuity. Welcome back to Weirdly Interesting. Today, we're exploring the origins of makeup and beauty. Egyptian Lead Mascara Makeup is thought to have originated with the ancient Egyptians over 6,000 years ago. They would use a substance called coal as an eyeliner or mascara. Coal was created by mixing soot or ash with a mineral known as galena, which was a bluish-gray form of lead sulfide. If you're thinking, um, hold up, isn't it a bad idea to paint your skin with lead? Wasn't there this whole thing with leaded paint and leaded gasoline pretty recently that caused all kinds of physical and mental health problems? Well, you're right. Fortunately for the Egyptians, they apparently figured this out. Coal was processed and filtered for up to a month in order to lower its lead levels. Both men and women of all different social classes used the substance to highlight the eyes to create that iconic look we still venerate today. But coal had other uses besides just the aesthetically pleasing look it created. The eyeliner also had antibacterial properties that helped guard against eye infections. It also shielded the Egyptians' eyes from the sun in much the same way that eye black does for football and baseball players. In addition to coal, ancient Egyptians would also use red ochre, a naturally tinted clay that was dried out and then ground up into a powder to give their cheeks and lips a slightly reddish hue. A mineral called green malachite was also used as a kind of eyeshadow. The Egyptians believed that this green eyeshadow had spiritual properties and was connected to the eye of Horus. In Egyptian mythology, Horus lost his left eye in a battle with Seth. The eye was later restored by the god Hathor. The Eye of Horus was thus a symbol of health and protection, and the image was often portrayed on amulets and depicted in various hieroglyphs. The use of makeup and other beauty products went hand in hand with spirituality. Various animal pigments were also added to makeup, and the containers and applicators often were engraved or shaped like various sacred animals. Using the pigment in their makeup or grinding the pigments on a palette shaped like certain animals was thought to give the wearer some of the physical and spiritual powers held by those creatures. Egypt's beauty standards also didn't stop at death. Mummies would often be buried with cosmetics, combs, jewelry, and scented ointments to make sure they'd look sharp for their journey into the afterlife. Smooth, soft skin was also in ancient Egypt. Queens like Cleopatra and Nefertiti, romanticized, idolized, and held up through the ages as icons of beauty, would take milk baths to soften their skin. They would also use a concoction of sugar and honey as a natural way to remove body hair. This ancient practice has recently made a modern comeback as a natural alternative to more painful hot wax applications. Greek Beauty Standards While tall, slender women were held as the epitome of beauty in ancient Egypt, by the time the ancient Greeks came around, the standards had changed. Greek women with ample bosoms and more body fat were considered the most beautiful. Take a look at any statue depicting a woman from ancient Greece and this fact will be pretty obvious. The Greeks were a lot like Sir Mix-a-Lot in that they lacked big butts and they could not lie. Maybe they weren't pumping Baby Got Back in the amphitheaters, but they did like a man or woman with weight to them. One of the most famous statues depicting this beauty standard is Aphrodite Callipagos. The name itself literally means Aphrodite of the beautiful buttocks and it shows the goddesses behind prominently while her head seems to turn around and look down upon it in satisfaction. While curvy women represented the female standard of beauty, it was men who were often held to higher standards. Take a look at any Greek statue of a man and you'll see how athletic muscularity was pretty much worshipped at the time. In fact, the female form was actually considered a kind of disfiguration of the male form. The patriarchy was alive and well in ancient Greece despite all the great advances they made in art, philosophy, politics, and science. The word for beauty in ancient Greece was kalos. Kalos wasn't just external beauty. The Greeks believed that outward beauty was also a sign of someone's internal beauty. If you were beautiful, then you were a morally good person and vice versa. It was around this time that the Greek mathematician Pythagoras discovered the golden ratio. Balance and symmetry became linked to beauty of all kinds, in nature and in humans. 
Symmetrical faces were thus considered the most beautiful faces. It went so far in ancient Greece that unibrows became all the rage. Unibrows, a feared facial feature now which many people try to hide through plucking or shaving, were considered more beautiful because they were more symmetrical. Many people would go so far as to use coal, that Egyptian mascara, to paint on a unibrow if they were unlucky enough to have been blessed by the gods with a lusciously joined brow. Toxic Makeup While the Egyptians figured out a way to get at least some of the poisonous lead out of the coal substances they used as makeup, they still were afflicted by the trappings of beauty. That Greek malachite they used to conjure the eye of Horus also conjured eye infections, mental health problems, and respiratory issues. Heavy metals like lead, manganese, antimony, and copper probably shouldn't be applied directly to the skin no matter how much you try to lessen their side effects. The Egyptians also liked to make lipstick out of a chemical called bromine manite, seaweed, and iodine. Bromine manite is a toxic chemical found in certain plants that causes vomiting, skin lesions, seizures, and death. It's said that the phrase, kiss of death, came from this lipstick, as it could even cause the men kissed by the women to perish of unintentional poisoning. Other cultures and the women and men alive in them also faced similar problems, pun intended. Lead makeup was also all the rage in Greece, Rome, and Victorian England. Other toxic chemicals were used in the name of beauty throughout the years. During the Italian Renaissance, women would use eye drops that contained deadly nightshade, also called belladonna. Deadly nightshade is, well, deadly. In small amounts, it would dilate the woman's eyes and make them watery, a seductive trait in Italy at the time. Unfortunately, it had some not-so-seductive side effects like blurred vision, hallucinations, headaches, vertigo, and eventual blindness. Dying to be white the desire for white skin is a very old one. It began with the ancient Greeks who would put lead makeup on their faces to make them whiter. Lead, as we've seen, is not the healthiest of substances. In their quest for whiter skin, women would be forced into a vicious cycle. Their skin would become scarred from all the toxins, so they'd have to use more and more of the toxic whitener to cover up the damage done by the toxic whitener. The pale skin trend continued into the Roman Empire and eventually into medieval Europe. Some women at the time would even throw some leeches on their ears to drain their faces of blood. Fast forward to 17th century England, and women resorted to using literal rat poison to give themselves that fair-skinned look. One product called Aqua Tafana contained so much arsenic that it reportedly ended over 600 men who kissed the white cheeks of their lovers. Queen Elizabeth I loved to slather her face with ceruse, a lead and vinegar mixture that painted the skin quite white. She loved Ceruse so much that it apparently left her face mangled, a lot of her hair gone, and was possibly the leading cause of her demise. White skin was all the rage for so long because it meant you were of a higher class. Darker skin was equated with working outside, being exposed to the sun while toiling away in a field or on a construction site. This beauty standard still persists in many places. In Thailand, for example, whiter skin is still held up on a pedestal. Go into a supermarket and head to the cosmetic section, and you'll find rows and rows of lotions and sunscreens and ointments with whitening agents. Throughout history, people have gone to some pretty crazy lengths to meet their culture's standard of beauty. It's great that we're no longer caking our faces with lead, for sure, but there's still so much societal pressure surrounding what's beautiful and what's not. Maybe by understanding the history of the whole phenomenon, we can somehow move past it. Or maybe it's just part of our nature. What do you think? Are there any other weird beauty and makeup trends in history that you know of? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more weirdly interesting content.